Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about pimples on your lips. I know a lot of you guys deal with these. It can be pretty painful. I'm gonna go over what triggers them. I'm gonna discuss some things that look like them. And importantly, we're gonna talk about how to get rid of them. So pimples around the mouth are not uncommon in people who have acne. They don't actually happen like right on the lip because there are no hair follicles there, but rather they tend to occur right along what's called the vermilion border or in the corners of the mouth. Just like acne anywhere else on your face, or your body, acne on the lips is caused by the same factors. Overproduction of sebum, aka oil, and that is governed by your genetics and hormones. So a lot of women experience acne breakouts around the time of their periods or with say, for example, starting and stopping a new form of birth control medication. The other factor is the cells lining the pore. They mature and turn over a little bit slowly and efficiently. They get stuck together. They plug up the pore that's called a comedone. And then the third factor is the little bacteria that lives in the pore, Cutibacterium acnes. It breaks down the sebum that's collecting in there, leading to the generation of a lot of inflammation. Acne is something that affects both men and women, and honestly, you can develop acne at any age. It's not just something that you get as a teenager. There is some debate that certain foods, namely those that are have a high glycemic index, may play a role due to their influences on hormones like insulin-like growth factor, but there still is a lot of research that needs to be done on the role for diet and acne. The other thing that plays a role in acne breakouts might be anything that's irritating to your skin, whether that be a irritating skincare product. In the case of acne around your mouth, we're talking about lip care products, lip scrubs, lip balms, lip cosmetics, maybe even a cosmetic procedure that you got that was really irritating to your skin and left you with an acne-like breakout. Certain medications and supplements also can trigger acne, namely testosterone replacement therapy, antibiotics, steroids. There's acne and then there are all of these other things that look like acne but are very different. They don't involve cutie bacterium acnes. They don't involve sebaceous oil production. They don't involve pores getting clogged. And they can look like acne but they have different treatment approaches because the reasons they happen are much different in comparison to acne. The first acne mimicker around the mouth is going to be a herpes cold sore. I have a whole video all about cold sores. I'm always nervous to talk about them because anytime I talk about cold sores, it always seems to trigger what I like to call the herpes bots. Basically, my comment section gets flooded with bots claiming that they have a cure for herpes. There is no cure for herpes cold sores, so don't fall for those scammer bot comments. Anyway, a cold sore is a reflection of the herpes simplex virus that lives dormant in your body, and it wakes up from time to time and causes a painful bump around your mouth that you might think is a pimple, but is not. In contrast to a pimple, a herpes cold sore is going to start out first like kind of a pain, painful, tingly sensation, something you may have experienced in the past. And then you're going to get a grouping, a clustering of little blisters. Sometimes those blisters can fill with pus and it will spontaneously go away within a couple of days to a week. Cold sores are caused by the herpes simplex virus, whereas acne is not caused by a virus, but rather a bacteria plays a role in acne, cutie bacteria in acne. Cold sores can be triggered by any kind of stress to your body or to your skin. Getting sick, having a flu, being under severe emotional distress. A lot of women develop cold sores in relation to their menstrual cycle, changes in hormones. If you have undergone any type of cosmetic treatment, like a chemical peel or a laser treatment, sometimes that can elicit a herpes cold sore outbreak. The other thing that can definitely trigger cold sore outbreaks is UV exposure, the sun, because the sun suppresses the immune system. So the herpes virus is like, whoo, nobody is keeping me in check, I'm gonna wake up and cause a cold sore. A lot of people also develop a cold sore in the winter time due to exposures to harsh, cold winter winds. Knowing that it's a cold sore and not a pimple is important because a lot of the treatments for pimples can be pretty dang irritating to a cold sore. As far as treatments for cold sores, there are medications, antiviral medications that you can take at the first sign of an outbreak that will reduce the duration of a cold sore. Cold sores are contagious, acne is not contagious. Moving on to some other things that look like acne around the mouth but are not it, perioral dermatitis. And I know a lot of y'all deal with this condition. Perioral dermatitis involves the eruption of little bumps, a couple of millimeters in diameter, around the mouth. In some cases, it also involves the area around the nose and around the eyes. In contrast to lip pimples, which are gonna happen along the vermilion or in the corner of the mouth, perioral dermatitis notoriously spares 
spares the vermilion. So it's gonna evolve all around the mouth, but it's gonna spare right up close to the lips. So you get this zone of sparing with perioral dermatitis. With perioral dermatitis, there is no pore clogging responsible. So you're not gonna see clogged pores. You're not gonna see comedones. That's a medical term for clogged pores, whiteheads and blackheads. You're not gonna see that with perioral dermatitis. Perioral dermatitis often has symptoms of burning, stinging, tingling, just discomfort like your skin is on fire. And people with perioral dermatitis are very sensitive to things that come in contact with the skin. It's thought actually to be a variant of rosacea. If you do a biopsy of one of the little spots of perioral dermatitis and look at it under the microscope, it looks very similar to rosacea. And some of the same things that bother rosacea bother people who have perioral dermatitis, namely sun exposure, irritating skincare products. In contrast to acne, the treatment for perioral dermatitis really involves a period of time with no intervention, uh, kind of a washout where you avoid anything that comes in contact with the skin. Why people develop perioral dermatitis is not entirely understood. It actually can happen in young children. It happens often uh, with the use of inhaled steroids, like for asthma, for example, or maybe you're using a nasal steroid spray for your seasonal allergies, but maybe you've been using a topical steroid cream that actually can trigger perioral dermatitis. Other people develop perioral dermatitis in association with severe stress, whereas some people find that it is triggered by the use of certain fluoridated toothpaste. Now, I have a video all about toothpaste ingredients to avoid, and it's not clear that it's the fluoride per se in the toothpaste, but rather probably some of the surfactants used in the toothpaste, as well as the flavorants in these toothpastes that can be very irritating to the skin around the mouth. So definitely check out my video on toothpaste ingredients to avoid. I talk about common toothpaste ingredients that can trigger skin problems for some people around the mouth. When it comes to treating perioral dermatitis, it's actually a similar approach to treating rosacea, some of the same medications. Very, very tough condition to cope with, and I have lots of videos on this channel about perioral dermatitis, so make sure you check those out if you're dealing with them. But in contrast to acne, it's not going to involve the vermilion. Then moving on, you have a condition that I know a lot of you guys struggle with called milia. Milia are little white cysts. They can happen around the mouth. They can happen really anywhere on the skin. They happen commonly in young children. A lot of infants have them. For infants and babies, they tend to spontaneously go away. Adults can develop them spontaneously, but oftentimes they develop secondary to skin injury, trauma to the deeper layers of the skin, especially after certain resurfacing lasers, microdermabrasion can lead to an eruption of milia. Milia are typically not painful, um, like acne around the mouth can be. Now, while milia can spontaneously go away, sometimes they may not. There are treatments to get rid of milia in office. I didn't mention this, but another trigger for milia is actually prolonged inappropriate use of topical steroids. They can thin the deeper layers of the skin and trigger milia. Also, extensive sun damage due to thinning of the deeper layers of the skin can also be associated with the formation of milia. Another condition that affects the lips is something called four-dye spots. Now, I have an old video all about these, otherwise known as ectopic sebaceous gland. It's basically an oil gland appearing where it's not supposed to be. Little pinpoint yellow to white bumps. These are harmless, but if they bother you cosmetically, there are some procedures you're dermatologists can do to remove them. You see, this part of the lips, you don't get pimples here. The reason you don't get pimples here is there are no hair follicles here. You have hair follicles along the vermilion in the corner, but you don't have hair follicles here. Four dye spots are an oil gland that just appears there spontaneously. Now, normal oil glands don't happen here on the lips. They're in association with a hair follicle, a pore. There are no pores here on this part of your lip. So that random little yellow white spot is just your body randomly getting confused and making sebaceous oil glands where they're not supposed to. Now that you know some mimickers of pimples around the mouth, what are some things that can trigger pimples around the mouth or maybe aggravate this condition for you? You. We already touched on the fact that hormones play a role in acne breakouts, although there are medications for women that can help address the hormonal issue, namely spironolactone and oral contraceptive pill. These medications help in controlling the hormonal component that drives acne in women. You wanna be mindful of your skincare routine Anything that's too irritating to the skin certainly can trigger acne breakouts, worsen them, and that includes acne 
around the lips. One of the major factors in aggravating lip pimples, pimples around the vermilion or the corners of the mouth, is shaving or hair removal practices. Shaving can be irritating and that irritation can lead to little pimples in the hair follicle. Shaving is a form of exfoliating and if you press too hard it can be pretty irritating to the skin and that can lead to little pimples. Likewise, if you have ever waxed your upper lip, you know it's not unusual to develop little pimples afterwards because the trauma of waxing to the hair follicle, for a lot of people, their skin is just very sensitive to it. It brings in an influx of inflammation and that really can lead to little pimples. What about skincare products? Are there any ingredients that are comedogenic around the lips that can cause acne? It's really hard to say. Skincare products, they don't contain truly comedogenic ingredients. Like I feel like we give too much weight to the term comedogenic. When I think of something that is overtly comedogenic, I'm thinking of a very rare situation called chloracne where people are exposed to high amounts of like dioxins that um, actually get localized into the pore and cause rip-roaring blackheads. There's no ingredient list that is evidence-based, I'll say, that says if you use these ingredients, you will get acne breakouts. These will cause pimples. These ingredients will clog your pores. There are tons of ingredient lists that you'll run into online, but they are largely based on antiquated rabbit ear models. They don't hold up because what makes a product aggravating to one person's acne may be entirely different for another person. It's not merely the presence of certain ingredients, but rather the formulation overall. What about oily foods? Do oily foods like eating fried foods, donuts, do the oils from the foods cause pimples around the mouth? I mean, you have to remember the, the biology of acne. You have your sebum being produced, you have the skin cells getting plugged up there and making a, a comedone, and then you have that bacteria within the pore breaking down the sebum and causing a pimple. That's really where all of the, that's really where the root causes of acne are. Oils on the skin, they may be irritating to the pore, the follicle, that irritation may tip things over in a balance of pimple formation. But all that to say, like, it's not a reproducible thing that people who eat greasy foods get pimples around their mouth. If any, if there's any category of food that may be associated, it's those that have a high glycemic load, you know, processed sugary foods. There are some studies that suggest that uh, skim milk is associated with acne or whey protein supplements. But remember, association does not prove causation. And many, many, many people consume whey protein supplements, drink skim milk, and have zero acne. Uh, and many people with acne can consume those things and have no problems with their acne getting worse. What treatments can you do? Well, we already touched on spironolactone and oral contraceptive pills. For women with acne to address the hormonal component, we have a newer medication called Winlevy, which can be applied to the skin that addresses the hormonal component and can be used not only in women, but in men as well. Um, it's usually not effective as a standalone treatment, but it's something that is typically added to other acne treatments. Then you have topical retinoids. Now those can be pretty irritating around the mouth, but uh, they definitely can help in controlling skin cell turnover and normalizing things within the pore. It's really hard to tolerate them though around the mouth. There are oral retinoids, isotretinoin, aka Accutane, that definitely can help for some people. It helps retrain the uh, cells to turn over more efficiently and it actually shrinks the oil gland. Benzoyl peroxide, although it can be drying. You also have salicylic acid, like washes, leave-on peroxide, Products. Now, those two can be pretty irritating around the mouth. You may want to lean into a wash, less likely to be irritating because you're going to be rinsing it off the skin, but that is another option. It helps control the formation of comedones, so the clogging of the pores. Then, of course, there are antibiotics, oral antibiotics or topical antibiotics. We try and avoid those or use them for a limited time due to the risk of bacterial resistance, but those definitely can help as well. Um, then there are, of course, light-based devices, 
blue light can certainly be helpful for acne. It can be used alongside these other treatments. And there are now new lasers actually that really specifically target acne by only lasering in on quite literally the sebaceous oil gland. And these new lasers like uh, the one you may have heard of called Avaclear, they're actually safe to use in all skin tones. Whatever you do, don't pick or squeeze at your pimples. That does not make them go away faster. It just brings in more inflammation and causes more problems for you. But pimples around the mouth they're pretty painful for a lot of people the reason for this is that there's a lot there are a lot more nerves going on around the lips as you can imagine lips are you know they're they're really they have a lot of tasks it's not like your the skin on your forehead that just kind of sits there right the skin on your lips you've got to use to eat talk move your mouth uh, so it's a lot more it has a lot more sensory endings so for that reason pimples around the mouth tend to be a lot more painful if you do have a pain painful pimple rather than trying to squeeze it, I suggest a warm compress that can help it come to a head, so to speak, and alleviate some of the discomfort. All right, guys, that's what I wanted to talk with you guys about for today's video, all about pimples around the mouth. I really hope this video was helpful in pointing out some of the key things about pimples around the mouth, how to approach getting rid of them, and some of the other conditions out there that can look like acne, pimples but are quite different and have a different approach but if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye